What is going on everybody? So I'm back today to talk about a film that was released this year that I didn't get to catch it in the theater. And uh, this film had a lot of controversy surrounding it with, I guess, on-set qualms that the actors had with one another and all this behind-the-scenes crap that, to be honest, I don't really care about. And I know that it was met with relatively negative reviews when it was first released. And this film stars Florence Pugh, who I am actually a really big fan of. And I was really looking forward to checking this one out. And that is the film Don't Worry Darling. Don't Worry Darling is directed by Olivia Wilde, a 1950s housewife living with her husband in a utopian experimental community begins to worry that his glamorous company may be hiding disturbing secrets. When this film first came out and I heard the reviews of it, I expected this to be an absolute travesty, like one of the worst things I've ever watched because every review I was reading on Letterboxd was like one and a half stars, one star. And to be completely honest, Olivia Wilde's debut book smart, I was completely unimpressed with it. I thought the performances were okay. I didn't think that it was incredibly funny. And I thought the third act was relatively weak. It wasn't anything that we hadn't already seen before. And despite that, I do think there was some really nice cinematography in it. I think there were a couple of moments that shined. And I really like Olivia Wilde. I think she's a talented actress. I'm really ho I was really hopeful that with this step in a different direction, leaving that sort of like coming of age rom-com type of thing that she was trying to do with book smart and coming into a more psychologically twisted weird film would be a really unique experience to watch a director do that drastic of a transition and I had a hell of a lot of fun with this movie. I do think that there are problems with it. I don't think it is a perfect film, but I think that it's a really entertaining movie that accomplishes what it wants to do. And I think that it accomplishes it pretty well. So you're introduced to Florence Pugh's character. She lives at home with her husband, played by Harry Styles, and she lives this very stereotypical 1950s housewife life where she gets up in the morning, makes her husband breakfast, walks him out to the car, and then is expected to like clean up the house, have dinner ready when he gets off work. She goes into town and visits with some of the other wives. One of them is played by Olivia Wilde. Her husband is played by Nick Kroll. He gives an absolutely insane performance, as per Nick Kroll's usual. They all live in this small town called Victory, and they've all flown from where they originally lived to come live in this small town where they don't really know what any of their husbands do for work. They sort of talk about it, but it's never 100% explicitly said what they do, and they're kind of just expected to be homemakers and not really do much else and one of the wives at a period in the film starts to like question what's going on and uh, everyone is sort of treating her really badly because of it and Florence Pugh watches her slit her own throat and things just sort of go out of control from that point where Florence Pugh is questioning everything. The town is ran by Chris Pine who is like really this self-indulgent egotistical maniac who's you could just tell is like up his own ass from the very beginning of the film. And the film is just Florence Pugh sort of slowly unraveling what is going on in this community, why these things are happening, and leads up to a third act punch that I thought was pretty satisfying. Obviously this film is a really heavy-handed commentary on toxic masculinity, mistreatment of women, the way that women are perceived, and I think that a lot of it is really ham-fisted, similarly to Alex Garland's Men that came out like earlier this year. And I still enjoyed that film as well, but obviously the message is handled a little sloppily. It's definitely delivered in a way that's like, this is what we're telling you, and it doesn't really pull back. There isn't really any room for nuance or interpretation. You're 100% getting it delivered, but what I liked about this is the elements of it that made it feel much more like a Twilight Zone episode or just like something that that was fun and engaging and I really liked a lot of the visual sequences in this film. I thought that there was a really good use of like overlay in this and some really interesting editing choices that made it feel sort of dreamlike in a way that I think made the third act punch of this film much more impactful. Florence Pugh delivers an absolutely incredible performance. I feel like it doesn't matter what material she's given that she's always going to deliver despite what the material is. It's always really impressive to me how great of an actress that she is and what she is able to deliver no matter what the screenplay is. And she is definitely 
the highlight of this film. I know there was a lot of people complaining about Harry Styles. I don't think that he's awful. I think there's some moments that he's really not great, but I think he's serviceable for the part that he plays in this film. He's not like so bad that it takes away from the overall film. I think that there's moments that you can tell that he's much more of a musician and a stage performer than he is a an actor. And that kind of plays through at moments through the film, but he's not terrible. I think everyone else in the film does a really nice job. I really like this polished, clean version of this town they live in. It's very reminiscent of like a cleaned up Lynch's blue velvet where everything is like super oversaturated. And I liked that. I thought that that really added to the seedy elements of the film that made it really uncomfortable and unnerving. If there's another qualm I have with this other than the pacing and the repetitive nature towards the beginning of the or the middle acts of the film, I kind of wish that they just would have pushed it in an even more extreme direction. That there was a little bit more visceral and violent violent moments that kind of contrast with that really tidy and polished world that they lived in. But I think, like I said, it was really effective for what it was trying to do. I don't think that this is like awful. I think the people that are out there saying this is absolutely horrible are probably either picking apart at the drama surrounding the film or kind of investing themselves in it a little bit more than necessary. I don't think that this is anything more than a really simple Twilight Zone-esque episode that's putting forth a very, uh, a very simplistic message about feminism and how women are treated in a way that's really easy to digest even for viewers that don't understand nuance whatsoever. It's not hard to pick apart what this movie was trying to do. And I would watch this again. I think it was really enjoyable and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. So have you seen Don't Worry Darling? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was really entertaining. I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. I thought it was super engaging and fun and I will definitely be checking this one out again. As always, if you like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.